Hi guys, Craig Beals here again, and I want to talk about radiation and radioactivity, one of the most important concepts in understanding basic chemistry. And in order to do that, I want to show you some radioactive substances. Now, radiation is definitely not something that you just want to play around with. But I'm a chemistry teacher, so I have some really great things at my disposal, and I want to show you some of those. So, whoa, uranium. So this is actually uh, carnitite, which is an ore, and it has got radioactive uranium inside of it, uranium-238. There is a little bit of radiation sneaking out of that uranium inside of there. I can detect it because of this. So this is an ionizer. It's not a Geiger counter, but it's something similar. And some of that radiation, you hear it? Some of that radiation is still sneaking out of that glassware. So what is that shooting out of there that this little thing is picking up? Those are radioactive particles. So we got to take a jump back to isotopes to understand these radioactive particles we're talking about. Now hopefully you recall that atoms have protons and neutrons in the nucleus. And atoms always have the same number of protons. So that uranium is number 92 on the periodic table. It's always, always, always going to have 92 protons. If it changes from 92 protons, now it's become a different element. Okay? Well, sometimes uranium can have a different number of neutrons. So each one of the uraniums inside that carnitite sample, um, they don't all necessarily have the same number of neutrons around them. We call that an isotope. Okay? Atoms with the same number of protons, all uranium has the same number of protons, but there might be a different number of neutrons on each of those. Let's look at, um, let's go back a little bit and talk about carbon instead of looking at uranium because the nucleus is just too darn big. So isotopes are a really important concept because isotopes are what cause radioactivity or cause radiation. The way that we keep track of isotopes here is we count up the number of protons and neutrons in the nucleus, and really the number of neutrons. I'm looking at carbon here. I know it's carbon because it's got six protons, and I count up the yellow ones there. There are six of those, so this has got a mass of 12, and normal happy carbon is carbon 12. Then I count up the other one over here. It's got six protons. It's got seven neutrons, so this is actually carbon 13, because six plus seven is 13. This is an isotope of carbon 12. This one has got six, and it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight neutrons over there. Six plus eight is 14. So we've got carbon 12, carbon 13, and carbon 14. They're isotopes because, look, they have a different number of neutrons, but they're still carbon. When we're talking about radioactivity, two terms that we really need to understand, the first one being the parent isotope. So let's say we have carbon-14 like we looked at before. It is a radioactive substance and it is going to decay. So it's going to change and give off particles, we call that radiation, until it turns into something stable. And one of those is nitrogen-14. So how can carbon turn into nitrogen? Well, remember, if the number of protons changes, then the element changes, so there must be something going on there. Well, let's look at the three types of radiation and see if we can solve this puzzle why carbon-14 is somehow turning into nitrogen-14. So three types of radiation. The first type is alpha radiation. Okay, Alpha radiation is made up of alpha particles. An alpha particle is something that has two protons and two neutrons inside the nucleus, so it's got an overall two plus charge, because think about it, two protons, Neutrons don't have a charge. There's no electrons to even that out. So it's got a positive 2 charge. This is the same, essentially, as a helium-4 nucleus. Helium is number 2 on the periodic table. It's got two protons. We've got two neutrons hooked onto there. So this is almost exactly the same thing. So there's my two pro protons, the neutrons, or the blue ones there. It's got an overall plus 2 charge. So here's how we write this when we're doing radioactive equations. We put the 4 at the top and the 2 down at the bottom. 4 tells us the mass, the 2 tells us the charge on the inside of the nucleus, or how many protons are there. So now we can do our first step of radioactive math. In other words, you're going to be a nuclear engineer on a very, very basic level when we get done with these next couple of slides. 
radium 226. All right, I, like, I write RA and I put the mass of this isotope of radium up here and I look on my periodic table and on my periodic table, radium is number 88. So I put that down here. This is saying it's gonna undergo decay and it's gonna turn into radon 222 after it gives off an alpha particle. So here's the easy thing. I've got a four over here and a 222 over here. What do I need to put right here to even that out? Well, 226 minus 4 equals 222. 88 minus the 2 over here equals 86. I look on my trusty periodic table, and 86 over here is radon, R-N. First step of radioactive math. Look at there. So what we're saying is radium-226 will decay into radon-222, and phew, it'll shoot off this alpha particle um, from the nucleus. Next one is beta decay or beta radiation. You can see the symbol for it there. And basically this symbol is telling us that we must be dealing with electrons or an electron with a negative one charge. Now, how can that be? If we go back to what we just learned on the previous slides, right here, this should be the overall mass. It has no mass. And in an earlier video, I talked about electrons not having, well, they have a very little mass. So it's actually easiest for us to write a zero there. And right here, this tells us the charge in the nucleus, or in this case, the charge overall, it's a negative one charge for that beta particle. I'm sorry, that's supposed to be an arrow. So how can we use this? Well, let's go back to carbon 14, our example that we looked at before. Now carbon, when we write that out, we put the 14 up top, and I look on my periodic table and carbon is number six. It means it has six protons. But then I see over here, oh, it's gonna undergo decay and give off a beta particle, which means an electron. Well, I thought electrons lived around the outside edge. They do, but guess what? A neutron has a neutral charge because it's basically got the components of a proton and the components of electron squished together. It's got the positive part and the negative part squished together. That's what makes it neutral. So if you can pull off the negative part and shoot it off into space, which is what a beta particle is, you're left with the positive part. And so now we call that a proton inside the nucleus. So the number of protons has changed to seven because seven plus a negative one equals the six we have over here. 14, we have nothing over here, so it's still gotta be 14. And we know that that is nitrogen because nitrogen has seven protons. Those, this is, uh, very simplified um, decay for carbon-14 and turning into nitrogen-14 as it releases a beta particle. The last, and last but not least, are gamma radiation. Now, gamma radiation is by far the most harmful because it is super, super high energy radiation. It has no mass and it has no charge. The other ones at least had a mass and charge. So this is just energy and we write it with the Greek gamma and zero, zero. Zero because it has no mass, and below that because it has no charge. Now, in a radioactive equation like this, somebody would have to tell you that gamma particles were given off because there's no way to calculate it mathematically, at least not with the skills that we have just yet. I've put the uranium-238, and it's gonna decay into thorium-234. As it does that, it's gonna release an alpha particle. We already learned what that looks like. And then it's gonna release two gamma rays from that. Okay, alpha particles, not too harmful because they don't have, they have trouble penetrating through much, but gamma rays can be potentially very, very harmful um, if you get any sort of dose out of those. That brings me back to my uranium here. Okay, that uranium we can see is undergoing decay. And if there's uranium-238 inside of my sample here, which there's probably several types of uranium isotope inside of there, but the 238 is decaying into thorium. We can hear the particles being given off, alpha particles. And um, there's a lot of other stuff because there's many other steps of radiation going on in here. There's probably beta particles coming off of here and gamma rays as well. But really what we're picking up with this ionizer is the uh, alpha and, and a lot of the beta particles coming off of here. Let's summarize everything that we've got. Let's go back to alpha particles. Alpha particles have a mass of four, they have a charge of two, and we write it this way. We know they have a mass of four, 
and they have an overall charge of 2 plus. Beta particles, we write that with the Greek beta, 0, negative 1, that means they don't have any charge, and they have a 1 minus. And then finally the gamma, which has no mass and no charge, it's just super high energy. Now, one thing to note about radiation, it's all around us all the time. In high amounts of it, it can be very harmful. It's used in treatment of cancers to kill cells. In fact, in your home right now, you've got radioactive particles working for you. Hopefully you have a smoke detector in your home, and if you do, that smoke detector is giving off radioactive alpha particles in a very small amount to help save your life in the event of a fire. How are you using radiation to keep yourself safe? This is actually the inside of a smoke detector, much like all of you hopefully have in your home. And this is giving off a steady stream of alpha particles shooting out of here. Now don't go and break apart your smoke detector. That's why I've got this one here is to show you so that you don't have to break your own apart. And if you really want to know what's going on inside of here and how this works, I've got a whole separate video to explain that. But remember, radiation is a part of our everyday life. Understanding it helps you understand how the nucleus transforms and how we all of a sudden end up from things like carbon-14 turning all the way into nitrogen-14 or uranium with stockpiles of it inside of mountains that take billions of years before they stop decaying and giving off this energy. And it all has to do with that nucleus and the number of neutrons that live inside of there. Hey. Keep on learning.